Okay, um, so before we start any painting, I just want to talk a little bit about the surfaces that we can paint on um, and how we prepare them, different types of surfaces. Um, as I've said before, if you've been on any of my courses, um, the quality of the materials that you use all contribute towards the overall effect um, and the quality of the finished painting in a small way. Um, so buying the best paints that you can afford, using the best brushes and also using the, um, um, thinking more about the surface and the type of surface that you're going to paint on will all contribute to the finished result. Um, so most people when they start to paint um, either acrylics or oils, not so much watercolour, well definitely not watercolour really, um, might start using one of these sort of pre-bought canvases that's, that are stretched over a, a cardboard panel. Um, which is absolutely fine um, to start with um, but personally that I find that there are some problems with these these boards first thing is um, you're stuck with the size that is available in the shop um, and they often have a range of sizes but um, you are limited you don't have your own control over that um, secondly the surface of this and if, if I zoom in on this um, is quite regular okay it's just a standard canvas that's been um, glued to the cardboard and then it's had a primer sprayed over it so um, it's completely even the surfaces which might be what you want um, but personally I find it's um, the, the finished result is more interesting if there are some irregularities in the surface um, now the other thing is the primer that's being used on these is um, it's a really cheap primer and it is very absorbent so if you're using water, uh, acrylic based paints um, which obviously are um, uh, they have a water medium in them um, the water gets sucked out of the paint um, very quickly so as soon as you've put the paint on the surface you can't then manipulate it on the surface because um, the surface just soaks up all the water so it's very difficult to blend colours together same thing happens with oil paints in that um, oil, the pigment is carried in an oil based medium um, and as soon as you put that on the surface um, it soaks up the oil and you can't blend very well so the primer isn't very good if you do decide that you want to use these what I would suggest is priming it yourself uh, and I'm going to talk about primers in a moment okay so they are the, the cheap sort of they're about a couple of quid for a panel uh, which is great to get you started um, the type of boards I actually prepare my own boards and um, that's just a piece of hardboard that's been cut to the size that I want so that's the first benefit is that you can actually cut this to the size that you want um, it's then been sanded down um, and the reason I sand it is to get rid of any grease off the surface and also it provides a key then that I can apply um, a gesso to it or gesso and what I actually use is um, this it's called gambling ground and it's an oil based um, ground it's it's the primer for the surface and I will give the boards three coats of this um, okay um, and it provides a really nice surface to paint on it's not as absorbent as the the cheaper canvases that I was talking about so when you paint onto this you will you'll be able to move the paint around on the surface the other thing that I like about preparing my own canvases, I don't know if you can see if I, I don't know if you can see there's a texture to this where the um, the brush marks have made a texture. Okay, and what happens is you'll find that, particularly with the early layers of paint that you put on, the thinner layers of washes will sit in these little valleys and grooves um, and create some really interesting effects. Um, particularly handy if you're painting nature, if you're doing landscapes, where uh, the, the landscape's very, very complex. I mean, if you're painting trees, there's an incredible amount of complexity in them. And straight away, with just a few marks, you can start to suggest some of that complexity because there's variations in the surface. Um, so I'll prime this with this um, ground. I'll prime it three times. And one thing I'm thinking about while I'm priming it is um, painting the ground on in um, random ways. I'm not sort of painting, let me get a brush. Um, I normally just use a household brush for this sort of thing. So a normal sort of household paint brush. Um, another one. This is the one I've actually used for these. It's quite a rough old brush and uh, the bristles are, uh, are really stiff. And when I'm 
painting the ground on. I'm not sort of doing this to get a nice regular finish. I want a regularity so I'll be moving the brush around in all different directions and um, applying the ground in different sorts of thicknesses to create some texture on the surface. Um, in fact there are some artists who they will um, they will up prepare the canvas with a finished painting in mind so they may want some texture over this side of the, the board and um, they will add more texture with their um, primer so that when they come to do the painting it's actually already in the right place okay so you can think about that as something it's that additional level of control okay so that these are great for um, plain air paintings outside um, they're really hard wearing the advantage over the canvas which I'm going to talk, over, talk about in a minute is they don't dent so with a conventional canvas like this um, you do risk if something presses against it getting dents in the canvas whereas this is really resilient Okay. Anyway, coming to the, the canvas, um, so I use, um, this is actually linen, um, this is a portrait grade linen. Um, now the difference between linen and canvas is the weave in linen is irregular, with canvas it tends to be more regular, so there'll be, there will be some irregularities in this, and occasionally you do get some flaws in it, like there might be a little knot in it or something like that. Okay, this is a very, very fine grade, but you can get really coarse canvases that are very, very textured. It all depends what you're, what you're aiming for and what you want in the final painting. Okay, so we have um, the canvas. This comes on big rolls. Um, it's cheaper to buy. The more you buy, the cheaper it becomes. Um, and that is then stretched over stretcher bars. Um, you do get um, what they call gallery stretcher bars, and they are the ones where you uh, won't be using a frame. So the actual um, depth of the, the stretcher bar is probably double this. It's probably like an inch or so. This is 18 mil. Um, and um, these basically slot together, you can see the sort of a mitered corner and they just slot in together like this. You sometimes need a rubber mallet to um, put them together so I would bang that with a mallet to get it really tight and then you create the, the size of um, canvas that whatever you want. I mean these, these are probably a couple of pound a piece, um, probably less than that actually. And if you buy them, again if you buy lots of them um, the price really drops. I think I buy a box of sort of 20 or 30 at a time and it drops down to about 60p each. Um, okay, so it's actually better to prepare canvases in big batches. Um, that's the best thing to do. Um, you'll notice with these that there is a bevel on this, this side here. It's, there's like a raised lip. That is the side that you paint on. So the canvas will be stretched over here and then that raised lip just lifts the canvas away from this wooden surface so that you don't have a mark where the wood is and it just raises it away so you have to remember that when you're putting them together okay um, you see here's the canvas that I've prepared um, I will do a video on how to stretch a canvas at some point so the canvas is stretched around these bars um, and then you can't just paint the um, the gesso straight onto the canvas um, and you can't just paint straight onto the canvas because what will happen is the chemicals in the paint actually attack the surface of the canvas and over time they will rot the canvas so what you have to do is you have to seal the canvas with, with what they call a size and um, traditionally the size was rabbit skin glue so you basically melt the rabbit skin glue in a pot and paint it on and it would seal the canvas Nowadays, a lot of people use the uh, synthetic size, and this is, it's almost like PVA, but very, very runny PVA, and it's acrylic binder. And um, if you paint this on a couple of coats of this, once you've stretched your canvas, will actually um, seal it nice, and, and it will dry nice and tight. In fact, I've got one that I've just primed. Just let me get it. So... So here's a canvas that's just been stretched and you can see it's not quite dry actually there so the, the size is drying on the surface there. Um, that's just been stretched and that will dry. You can hear that, it'll be drum tight once it's dry and it will need another coat. Once it's had two coats of the size um, I can then paint on um, the gesso, the ground. Okay, And it's the same principle as it was with the panel. I, 
I try to um, give it as much of an interesting surface as I can. I don't know if you can see that. You get to see the brush marks. Um, and that just adds some interest to the surface when you come to do the painting. Okay. Um, that, that's just panels and canvas um, or linen. You can people, people paint on all sorts of surfaces. You can use um, sort of MDF um, plywood, birch ply, um, as long as it's sanded down beforehand, um, so that the it keys the surface for the primer to go on. Um, some people even paint on aluminium. Um, so there's all sorts of surfaces that you can paint on. But the one thing that you do need to do is. Um, prepare it with the um, the ground um, and that will allow the paint to move around on the surface a little bit to blend the colours and it doesn't just suck all the medium out. Okay.